The jury will not be sequestered. I'm Brian Buckmeyer along with Terry Austin. Getting the Weinstein case, fellow silence breakers, and any yeah, the jury selection is moving along well, here. Well, I'll read the verdict, says the Jesse Weber, and thanks for joining us. We don't tend to see it as raw as this. Good evening and welcome. Welcome to Law and Crimes for the Record. My name is Bob Bianchi. I'll be taking it to three o'clock. A lot on the plate today. Billy Ray Turner waiting for closing arguments in the shooting death of an NBA basketball star. Dr. William Hussle, a former doctor, accused of killing 14 people. Uh, was, it, was it compassionate care or was it uh, forced death murder, as the state is saying? And also we have this uh, Sarah Lawrence sex cult case, a 62-year-old charged with 17 charges that carry up to life in prison for sex trafficking. Uh, having uh, charged with extortion, racketeering, money laundering. We have Adam Plasfeld with us, the managing editor at the Law and Crime Network. Adam, I hear that the courtroom proceedings at the federal court, so we don't have cameras in there, but they ended abruptly and that nobody knows why. But uh, give us the lowdown on what's going on in that case. Uh, you have it exactly right. The proceedings ended abruptly Monday after uh, the weekend recess. Uh, we have Claudia Drury, who's the key witness to the sex trafficking count, still on the stand. We're still at the government's direct examination. And today, she's speaking about a different count of the indictment, essentially forced labor. She was talking about how uh, Larry Ray allegedly brought her and a group of the other Sarah Lawrence students to his stepfather's property in North Carolina, that it was said to be remote that it, nothing was really in walking distance in the town uh, in North Carolina, and that she was doing a lot of physical labor, that uh, putting sod in the yard and uh, other work that she really described as a lot of toil. Uh, it, the, her testimony is continuing from what happened on Friday when she went to the heart of the sex trafficking count, said that she was essentially forced into prostitution by Larry Ray, and that she made $2.5 million for him uh, in that work. Over the course of four years, she was, said she was working seven days a week, up to from three to five different clients a day. So it's really intense testimony. She teed up uh, perhaps more about another pretty well-known witness in this case, Dan Levin. He's the author of a memoir about the Larry Ray case called Sloan and Woods Nine, which is the name of the dorm where they were all in together, and talked about some of the gruesome stuff that Larry Ray would uh, force him to do, allegedly, that uh, in one incident involving, uh, and she said on the witness stand before proceedings abruptly ended today, uh, forced him to use a rather large dildo, humiliated him with a, a picture of him uh, essentially forcing to uh, stimulate oral sex with this dildo. So that was one shocking piece of testimony today in a trial with a number of allegations quite like it. Right. I mean, Adam, you, you mentioned this whole idea that this case surrounds this 62-year-old man in a college dorm uh, victimizing all these people makes it that much more extraordinary to me. Uh, but you mentioned Claudia Drury, one of the victims. We actually have an actual clip uh, with respect to her. Let's take a listen to that and a look and uh, talk to you on the other end of that. You're on video now. Go ahead. Tell the world why you want to just feel sorry and sad. I don't want to. Go ahead. And how you just destroy things and damage everybody. I don't want to. Now look at you crying. What are you crying for? Why are you crying, Claudia? I don't want to. Well, you are. Why are you crying? Look. Look, there's Claudia. Say hello to all your Facebook friends. I don't want to. Don't want to what? I don't want to damage things. Well, when's the last time you damaged something? The day before yesterday. Well, today, because I didn't tell you though about the sites the whole time. So why are you trying to ruin my website business? I'm not trying to ruin your website well, business. Then, well, then what were you doing? 
I was damaging it by not telling you and doing what you asked me explicitly not to do. And so that's not ruining it? I was not trying to. But if you're trying to damage it and do, then aren't you doing that? Yes. So you're just a liar? Everybody out there in Facebook land, do you know Claudia as a truthful person or a liar? Well, Claudia, what do you think? Look at you, how you feel sorry for yourself. Look, you did something wrong. You know what's shocking, astounding, and disgusting? You do something wrong to someone else. You victimize somebody, and then you sit there and cry for yourself. I didn't yourself. want to. But do you realize what you're doing? She's not even hearing this. Do you believe this? No. Is? No, I don't believe that. Look at her hiding like a coward. He didn't in front want of to. Then who did it? The ghost? I did it. Adam, this is the first time I'm seeing this clip. I'm presuming that that is the defendant on the other end. It sounds like it's a Facebook live uh, thing that he's doing. Wow, the audacity of it. And is this going to be evidence that's introduced at trial? I assume it is, has it, because it's pretty damning. It, it is evidence that has been introduced. And there are many other video recordings, audio recordings just like it. Just to give a little bit of context to what is going on here, throughout this case, we hear more and more from these witnesses about uh, what prosecutors describe as these coerced and forced false confessions, where Larry Ray would typically have them admit to damaging their property. You heard in this clip a kind of claim that she damaged his website. Then the alleged victims would feel indebted to him and be forced to pay him, often large amounts of money. And at the heart of Drury's testimony is the claim that she was forced into prostitution to essentially pay him back, quote unquote, for what she, quote unquote, owed him from, for these transgressions. He would also convince these students that, he some, that they somehow poisoned him and his daughter. Uh, that was a recurring theme. We heard another audio tape, the, one of the days when this was introduced into evidence, we heard an audio tape of him essentially uh, uh, sounding like he's coaching Claudia Drury to tell her parents that she had intrusive thoughts, uh, that she thought that she wanted to kill them and wanted to uh, harm Another student who's now a co-conspirator, Isabella Pollock, and that these thoughts made her want to be institutionalized. You can actually hear him on the phone coaching her as she is presumably talking to her parents about that and hear her mm. calling out to her parents. So these were one of the things that's so central to this case is this uh, chronic uh, cataloging of this, whether in audio tape videotapes, uh, documenting it in written confessions or emailed confessions, where he would have these students confess to a number of crimes that prosecutors say and the witnesses say, all completely imagined, feel indebted to them, and force them to pay him in return. Well, Adam, uh, you're doing a great job out there covering this case. It, it's really twisted and uh, probably emotionally draining for the jurors. Thank you so much, Adam Klasfeld, uh, Long Crime Network's managing editor.